What's up, y'all? This is Paul from Between the Buried and Me, and you're watching Loudwire. I guess the first album I probably heard was, was Rain and Blood. And I just thought it was, you know, at that time, that, the time that I heard it, I wasn't really a metal guy. So I just thought it was like the most insane, you know, music ever. I was just like, what are they doing, you know? The guitar, all the riffs and some of the atonality of the guitar solos and stuff. I was just like, man, this is, this is just crazy stuff. I can't even honestly say I, I even like liked it at the time or resonated with it, but it wasn't until, you know, years later <clears throat> when I got into metal and hardcore and, and you see how much, how many bands derived their basic sound from what Slayer was doing back in the early mid 80s. Um, that's when I sort of gained appreciation for it and went back and listened to those albums. Um, you know, in particular, Rain and Blood and uh, South of Heaven, probably, um, and, and really started to have like a deep appreciation for it, uh, how influential they were. Chances are your favorite Slayer riffs were probably written by Jeff Hanneman. So uh, again, you know, he just, they were doing something so long ago that like people are still trying to replicate that, that vibe with, with riffs. Um, and he, yeah, he just had a knack for it, you know? He just had a knack for writing um, <clears throat> riffs that didn't necessarily even follow traditional sort of melodic flow, but they still somehow were catchy and powerful and heavy and all those things. And I think that's why you still see in sort of the metal and, and hardcore genres that that legacy has continued and will continue probably until the end of time. Well, I mean, I think we're just gonna miss the band, their performances. I think their legacy is already cemented. The, their influence is already cemented. There's going to be bands, again, that are trying to, to mimic that style or, or at least somehow directly or indirectly they're inspired by that sound. So that's never going to go away. I think what we're going to miss is just that band on stage together um, doing it, you know, to playing those songs and, and, um, and making those albums. I think that's, that's what we're going to what we're gonna miss about them. But at the same time, you know, um, Show No Mercy came out in like 83 or something. I was four years old. I mean, they've been at it for an extremely long time. So I just look at it as like, it's like a well-deserved, you know, retirement. They've been doing it a really long time and, and have, like I said, you know, their legacy is, is there. It's, it's not going anywhere. Um, and uh, there's tons of material we can listen to and be inspired by still. And, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just miss seeing those guys. We'll miss seeing Kerry King and Tom Araya up there playing those tunes, you know. We'll miss those big chains hang from Kerry King's. I don't know where he has those things attached, but it looks very cumbersome. 